Thank you very much for that. And uh, thank you also for persisting in getting us together um, after the uh, 18 months that we've had. Um, it's nice to be back face to face, seeing people, talking to people, and uh, removing ourselves from the uh, wonder of Zoom when we needed it, and now face to face seems to be very much better. I'm also grateful to your sponsors for helping to get us um, all together. Um, Dam, our very own local startup, which we're very proud of for being a main sponsor, and of course, all the others that have joined forces with you to, to put this uh, show on. It's in three months' time, it's four years since we began this journey in terms of the legislative framework. 1st of January 2018. What was the objective? It was actually quite simple. To create a new sustainable line of business for our jurisdiction in a way that was safe, that provided consumers with some levels of protection, and which attracted quality businesses to Gibraltar. Four years ago, in October of 2017, we published the legislation which took effect on the 1st of January 2018. And when we did that, I honestly couldn't have hoped for more than what we've been able to achieve by attracting a real group of quality businesses to Gibraltar to have their businesses run from here and to set up an ecosystem with professionals, with knowledge, with expertise, with firms in every sphere of this industry up and running by this time. And in effect, when I look around the room and I engage in these meetings, we have created that ecosystem. We now have expertise in Gibraltar in all of the different areas and facets that the DLT sector brings. There's a lot more to do, of course there is. There's a lot more we can learn, of course there is. But when I look around and I see what other jurisdictions are doing today, it tells me that we did the right thing in a way that was robust and provided consumer confidence. All over the world, there are countries now grappling with how to regulate the sector, how they should do it, how they can do it. I've always said from day one that if somebody does something which we can learn from and improve our own regulatory framework, we will. I'm not embarrassed to say or to do that. Why? Because our aspiration here is to have the best legal framework in the world in respect of this industry, to give you the legal certainty, to give you the government support, to give you the regulatory support with people within the regulator that know what they're talking about. And that hasn't changed on the contrary. Um, it's got stronger. Why? Because you have shown us faith in our own system and we are now treat you very much as our own stakeholders in seeking to further develop the work that we're doing. And yes, there is more to be done. Um, we are putting the finishing touches on the 10th core principle, market integrity. It's critical that we are able to provide some comfort against people seeking to abuse and manipulate the systems. And so that principle is, I am told, with the finishing touches being put on it by the regulator and the working group. Um, and I expect that we'll be able to publish that within the next um, 30 days. We also have an interesting uh, uh, announcement which we'll be making in the next two months on usage of blockchain. Government has been looking at this for some time and I hope within a very short period of time to be able to make a significant announcement, not just about the firm's that we are working with as our stakeholders here in Gibraltar, but the government getting its feet wet and actually dipping its toe into the technology itself, which will be exciting. And obviously we will be looking to firms already in Gibraltar to work with and support us in that endeavor. I have to thank the Financial Services Commission, William Gracia in particular, who is doing some incredible work in trying to meet your requirements and your needs uh, through your respective licensing processes and also obviously in supervising um, the work that you do. Ultimately, the importance of the regulator cannot be understated. They need to be pragmatic. They need to be able to sit across the table from you and talk through your problems and your issues. And they need to understand your business. And I'm delighted with the fantastic progress that William in particular has made, as well as the rest of his team, which we continue to look to grow in order to meet your needs. Barely a month ago, the um, 
the chair of the SEC in the United States, uh, had an article attributed to him in the Financial Times of London. And the heading was Crypto Platforms Need Regulation to Survive. With two trillion of assets within the sector, it is time to put this within a public policy framework. It's interesting because that is precisely the thought process that we went through from 2015 to 2017 when we came up with our own regulatory framework. And I have to thank David Barodi, Paul Stengo, and the private sector members of the working group who helped us to devise uh, uh, the, the framework that we did then. What you're seeing now, whether it's through the FATF, the European Union with MICA, um, and all the other organizations, the United Kingdom and many governments all over the world are looking at the issues of stable coins, CBDCs, uh, crypto generally, NFTs, and the evolution. And what the last four years has also proven to us is that we were right in adopting the idea and the concept of principles. If we had tied up the regulatory framework in the same as we do with insurance or investment firms with MIFID, the constraint would have been so great the business would not have been able to move with the speed the technology has delivered. And so I believe we were right to adopt those principles and we are right to continue to work with those principles by the introduction of the 10th principle on market manipulation, the refreshing of our guidance notes, and many of the other things that we're in discussions with many of you on, how we can further develop and keep this, keep at the forefront um, of this industry in a safe way with quality businesses coming to Gibraltar. So I'll close by saying this. Um, I hope you have a fantastic couple of days uh, in conference and have some time to have some fun too. It's a real pleasure in particular to welcome all of those of you who have come from abroad, uh, probably one of the first travels since the COVID uh, uh, pandemic began to become under some sort of control. Um, it really is a pleasure to have you here, and I hope we will see you here with more next year um, as these uh, events progress and as our expertise uh, progress. I also want to say to you that we will continue to focus on your industry. We believe in the work that you do, and we believe that there is a long way to go in terms of the adoption of what we're doing. We are still at an embryonic stage, and that's what is so exciting. We've barely started, but the opportunities that we see in the transition from traditional to what we're going to be go to with use of technology really is exciting. So I, I thank you all for being part of our ecosystem. I thank you all for being here with us. And uh, I hope you have a fantastic couple of days with lots to learn from our excellent uh, selection speakers. So, Peter, thank you very much.